Hello everyone, this is Mr. Fox, and I just wanted to go ahead and make a little bit of a video for our Assignment 7. I noticed that a lot of people haven't started on it yet. Uh, so, let's go ahead and jump into this. So, here we have the activity, right, and we're going to be making our adjusted entries, financial statements, and closing entries from a worksheet. And this is what a worksheet is. So, if you look at this here, this is actually what the worksheet is. Um, we're talking about all of the different things that are occurring in the business. So this is all information that has been furnished to you so that you can then go and make all of the accounts um, available, right? All right, so let's take a look here. So we get down to the problems, and we have number one, right? And that's to prepare an income statement for the month of March. So we actually have to know what these titles are. So if you're not familiar enough with the income statement from our videos, right, we have this really great little um, PowerPoint here, you know, this Principles of Accounting 1 PowerPoint, which is actually where this, um, this assignment is from, is related to this PowerPoint. That's why I included it. So if we scroll down, we see, oh, wow, great, an income statement. So we have an income statement, and what it's telling us is that we have our revenues, we have our expenses, and then we have each of those subcategories. And so let's go ahead and start filling this out. So I've got my revenue here, and then expenses, right? And I saw that my revenue had been the service revenue, and here I actually have service revenue. So we want to look at the service revenue. I don't want to look at the unadjusted trial balance though, right? I want to go and look at the income statement itself because that's really what I'm developing here, right? Is the income statement. So I want to go ahead and take a look at that. And I'll see that this should be three, what was it? Three, six, seven, zero, three, six, seven, zero. Okay, so then I have my account name and I know that that was the service revenue and I noticed that this is kind of poorly formatted right so I want to actually come up over here and add a few spaces because then my uh, my item will be offset from the title so then I can go and I can look at the rest of my income statement because now I know what I'm looking at right so I can look at it and see what all the things are that I need so I've got total expenses and then I have net income so here I'll write total and I'll offset that even more and then net income. And then I've got my expense accounts and that's really all I have to worry about. So here I have salaries, I have supplies, I have depreciation and other expenses, but mine might be a little different. So let's look. So again, we're looking at the income statement here. And I want to look at my actual accounts that I have for my income statement. So it looks like I've got an expense here. That's my salary expense, miscellaneous, supplies, and depreciation, right? So those are my four items here that I'm going to be working with. So I can go ahead and come down here and I can say supplies, expense. I can say salaries expense, and you might actually do these in the order of greatest to least, right? So I might say salaries because salaries are normally going to be your largest expense in an account. Uh, and then you're going to go to, I'm going to go ahead and do supplies because again, that's the next largest account. So supplies expense and then et cetera etc right so then I can look at the amounts so salaries I know that that was 1050 and then I had 800 here sorry 860 and then so on and so forth these will be some amount uh, but then I get to total expenses and total expenses it wants a formula instead so I'm gonna type in the equal sign and I'll say sum and I know that some of this Excel stuff will be new to you guys. Um, fortunately, Google Sheets is really, really nice about telling you what exactly you need to give this. So when you're doing a sum, right, that's exactly what it sounds like. You're having the computer make a sum of these numbers for you. So you can go ahead and click on the first cell that you want, and then you can either control click. If you control click, then you can select each one individually, or alternatively, you can come up here and 
this is my preferred thing for this, is that you'll click on the first one and then you can shift click and it'll go J48 through J51. And then you'll get your total expenses here. And again, for net income, well, we know what the formula for net income is. So I'm going to say net income is equal to, uh, I know it's going to be the revenue, and my total revenues here are going to be the service revenue minus my total expenses here. And then that'll get me my net income. Now, obviously, this isn't correct because I haven't entered my other two accounts yet, so these numbers are not quite what you need them to be yet. So let's talk about retained earnings. So retained earnings, if I come down, again, in this PowerPoint, has almost everything. Uh, I mean, everything in green ends up being something that you will have to make at some point here. And you've got T accounts, you have everything is, is listed here. But I just wanted to look at this real quick, right? So we have a retained earnings account. We add our net income, which we got from our previous activity. So we are adding our net income. And then you're going on to, at the end of this, you're going to have a retained earnings. So retained earnings. And I'm not a huge fan of the way that this is formatted, but again, this is going to be a less, right? And you have to see what is going to be less, and this is going to be an add. And this is our original retained earnings account. And then for retained earnings, you have to go up here, right? And you have to say, well, I started with zero. We're assuming that this company didn't have any retained earnings. And then our adding, right? Like it's saying over here, we're adding our net income. So you're adding your net income to it. So that's going to be uh, adding some amount, right? And that amount is actually going to come from your net income right up here. So that's very handy for us. And then you're going to be subtracting something else. So you're going to be adding something here, and then you're going to be subtracting something here, and then that's going to give you this, right? And remember, again, use the formula. I mean, always use formulas whenever you can. So your retained earnings here, it's going to be, oh, now I've got some craziness going on. You say equals, right? And then it's going to be equal to, well, it's going to be equal to retained earnings plus the next cell minus the cell after that. And right now it's getting mad because there's nothing going on. But you guys will be able to do it. Okay, so now let's go to a classified balance sheet, right? So we actually need this retained earnings to be able to do our balance sheet. So once you have that calculated, you can come here. But again, if you don't remember what accounts should be where, right? you should be looking at your PowerPoint or looking at a, just an example. You know, I could go to, I could just say, uh, come over here and I could do a classified balance sheet, right? And if I just Google it and I look at it, right, and I take a look, I'm going to see Okay, cool, right? So I've got these examples that I'm going to be able to use, and I've got all these different things that I'm going to be able to look. I've got this balance sheet right here. Now, the one that we have uh, here, the way that they structure it is they do assets and then liabilities, and a lot of these you're going to see assets and liabilities side by side, but it doesn't really matter, right? These are still the same document. Um, you've got assets on top of liabilities, assets next to liabilities. You've got right here, right? They have it broken down into all three components. So let's go back to closing the month out. And so you can see right here, right? This is going to be my assets, my liabilities and stockholders equity. And then I've got my assets here. And now I agree with you guys. I don't really like the way that this is formatted. Maybe in the future, I'll do more. I'll put more effort into reformatting these from the sources that I get. Uh, but that's not going to change a huge amount. Um, about how I'm going to fill this out because an asset sheet always has my different items on here, right? So I've got current assets, properties, plants, and equipment, and then intangible assets. And that's exactly what I'm going to uh, write out here. I'm going to have my current assets. I've got my plant 
long-term liabilities, property equipment, and other assets, other assets. So property and equipment, and that's the same thing as this property, plant, and equipment over here. So I'm going to say property and equipment. And then I'm going to say total current assets and then property plant. And then finally at the end, I'll have this total assets. And we have this thing called current assets and total assets. And uh, again, I'm not a huge fan of the way that some of these are worded. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Um, as you can see, all of this literature, right, they have all of these different terms and you're gonna have to be good at reading through and kind of parsing out different things. So now let's look at our accounts that we're actually going to be using here, right? So I've got my balance sheet and we're gonna go deeper into the balance sheet as we go along here. So this will be the first pass at it, but you guys will see it again. So under current assets, it wants three, three different accounts. So if we come up here, uh, we start parsing out and seeing what our current assets would be. 